photographs, and we just got the results. He's got a, what we call a condylar fracture. It's a fracture of the long, thin bone in the shin right at the ankle joint. And it's a routine fracture for us, and it's serious. I mean, he has to have surgery, but it's not something he has to have surgery right away. He'll get a day or two to settle down. And so what we'll do is let him tell us, or him tell Dr. Selway, what the, what the time is that he's going to do the surgery. So um, we're, it may affect his race career. This may be it for him, but he's done enough already. But he, he should be okay as a stallion. So we'll look for him next year. Now, did you also say that there was a problem with a sesamoid, too? He's got a little crack in the sesamoid right near where the condylar fracture is. And, and that's a function of that. This probably happened right near the wire, even though he pulled up a little bit afterwards. They try to go on with this. They, they're not really sure what's going um, about, but he's not comfortable. You can see right there he's not comfortable. Chris Antley's looking around trying to find a place to pull him up without a horse behind him, and he immediately gets off, and he knows that the horse's left front is not right, so he gets down on the ground and tries to protect that leg, which is really important for the, the, the long-term aspects of his career. It didn't go through the skin or any of those problems, which you sometimes have to worry about when the horse tries to go farther, so mm -hmm. there are some fortunate things about the accident, but it's really heartbreaking for a horse of this caliber. Well, it's good that it happened at the end of a mile and a half, and he was easy to pull up instead of at the beginning, which is a lot harder for a rider to get the horse stopped, and then the injury could have been much more severe. Well, that's for sure. I mean, it, if it happened during the middle of the race, he would have been thinking it was still going on. Well, Dr. Brown, with nothing personal, but we don't like when we have to talk to you on the air, but we certainly do appreciate your expertise and taking the time to explain. His racing career may be in doubt, and you see Chris Andley embracing the owner, Bob Lewis. Chris, I think twice prior in the in the Derby and in the Preakness, uh, and that's been a big asset to his performance. Um, you know, I've always let him run out of there, run a couple strides, gather him up, and let him, let him run into the bridle, and that's what we did today, and that's where he found himself. I didn't know if he would be in the first or second tier, but I let his stride judge the pace. Um, he was very comfortable there. He was relaxed. He let the filly go on and, and, and give, me, give me a target and, and just kind of sit off of her. I went to the three or four path down the backside, and he was so comfortable. He, he pricked his ears. He got off the bridle and was just galloping effortlessly. So I was very comfortable and pleased with his position there. Uh, you know, around the turn, uh, when he just started getting a little pressure from opposition on the outside, he, he quickened on his own, and I was able to, you know, gain the lead, drawn away from the filly when I first called on him, turn it for home. Um, he was trying hard, and then the, the eighth pole, he, he, he just kind of let up a little bit. I, I noticed was, it I seemed like he kind of... I wasn't just sure kind of ran out of steam, maybe. I wasn't sure why, but he just kind of geared down a little bit, and... You know, I continued to ride him, but at that time, you know, there was a closer on the outside that went by us, the eventual winner, um, the six horse. And uh, the six horse went by me, and I rode him just enough to hang on for third. Um, you know, not really whipping him anymore. And uh, after the wire, I don't know how many strides it was. I can't recall three or four strides. Um, I already had a hold of him, and he, he kind of dipped suddenly mm -hmm. underneath me. And I was able to pull him up without him fallen or anything and I don't think he would have because I don't believe it was a bad break. Mm -hmm. I, I think it may be a suspense or maybe a small fracture or something but he, he was in a little bit of pain. Um, he tried through that pain. You know he's an athlete and a lot of athletes get hurt this way. Um, but uh, he, he, he tried hard and it, you know he wasn't able to give the people what they wanted today. Well I'm sorry that your triple crown hopes didn't turn out the way you wanted but Charismatic did bring you to the Derby winner circle and the Preakness winner circle has been one heck of a comeback for you as a rider. It was a trip it was a great trip getting here and and you know these kind of things happen it's it's all a part of sports and and it, you know he's an athlete and he tried hard and you get hurt and and you know good horses have problems and they try hard and they get hurt and and that's what goes with any athlete and you know hopefully he's okay mm -hmm. and you know, maybe he's going to be a daddy one day. Okay. So we'll have something to look forward to. That we will. Thank you very much, Chris Alley. Best of luck in the